Hey, this is Lance. I want to talk a bit about memory patterns for agents, focusing specifically on deep agents. Now, you might think about memory in two different ways, explicit updating of agent memory and implicit updating of agent memory. Let me talk about the first one. So explicit updating of agent memory, you can see a great example of right here. This is the cloud code change log. This is recent yesterday. So cloud code recently removed this pound shortcut which you could previously use for updating memory. So previously you had to do this pound if you wanted to explicitly tell Claude to update memory. And then it basically brought you to this menu where you could choose which memory profile as in which Claude MD file you wanted to modify. So now you can just explicitly tell Claude in natural language, edit your Claude MD directly. Now the deep agent CLI has a similar mechanism for memory. You can see each agent has a configuration home directory .deep agents and your agent name. Default name is just agent, but you can have multiple agent configurations if you want. And within that global configuration, there is an agent MD file. Now, just like the Claude global MD, this agent MD is loaded into any deep agent you create within any project. And likewise, any given project has a deep agents directory with another agent MD file, as well as any project specific skills. So let's have a quick look at that. You can see my agent MD here, and it doesn't have anything of any significance. It's just a placeholder for right now. I'm global memory, and I have a preference in that I like cats. Now I can just kick off the deep agent CLI. And just as so we talked about explicit memory updating with Claude code, here you can also say something like, add to global memory that I like dogs. And it's pretty cool. It's smart enough to know where my global agent MD lives. It will read it and it will edit the file. Great. And it adds a new preference that I like dogs. Approve that and we are done. Very nice. Enter bash mode. And we can just look at that file. We can see that likes dogs is added to my global agent MD. Super simple example of explicit memory updating using deep agents in the same way that cloud code works. And it's worth noting that this global agent MD as well as any project specific agent MD files that are defined are always pulled into the system prompt of your deep agent automatically, just like with Claude code and Claude MD files. Now that is explicit memory updating. There's also this category, which I call implicit memory updating, which is a little bit more interesting. It's a little bit more subtle. So signals for updating memory can emerge just through the natural interaction between a user and an agent. Like you don't always tell the agent everything you want, but reveal preferences can come out just from interacting with it. This is what I call implicit memory updating. So I recently created this little plugin for Claude code called Claude Diary. All it is is a simple agent memory system built on top of Claude code, but easily extendable to deep agents as well. So the idea is simply this. Every session with an agent provides an opportunity for that agent to learn things that can be persisted to long-term memory. So there's some interesting examples of this. The Jenner of Agents paper was one of the early examples of what the paper called reflection. So an agent has a bunch of experiences. Those experiences are logged somewhere. And it performs reflection over those trajectories to produce higher level or more abstract thoughts that generalize across its experiences and can be saved and retrieved for the future. Now, there's some more recent papers that talk about this idea of context evolution. Zang et al. 2025, and it's actually a very similar principle. You have an agent, agent produces trajectories, you can reflect on those trajectories, you can see they have this little reflector, generating insights, and there's some kind of then updating of the system instructions, basically. That's the big idea here. It's super simple. We see this kind of over and over, this idea of just reflect on prior sessions and use that to update the agent's memory. I implement that with Claude. The approach I took is pretty simple. You have sessions. There's this diary command, which basically takes a session and summarizes it. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this. I just happen to do it because sometimes my sessions get really long. And I just wanted like a summarization of here's the key decisions or key things I did. Those accumulate over time. And I have a second custom command called reflect that will just look at all my diary entries that haven't been processed yet and use those to update Claude MD, which is just memory. And that's pulled back in whenever I start a session. And this feedback loop, you can just keep running. So as you have more and more sessions, you iteratively refine and update Claude MD. 
Now, one little interesting thing I found is that this reflect command actually reads in the current CloudMD before it does updating. It can recombine information already in the CloudMD. It doesn't just explicitly append, which could get redundant potentially and cause context confusion or context poisoning. So I'm reading in the CloudMD in this refinement step, looking at any recent reflections and then like just making selective edits to it, which may reinforce or delete existing rules depending upon the reflections that are produced. So the point is it's a little bit subtle, but it's not strictly append only. Now, one very important dependency for this whole system is you need to be able to access session logs. Now, in the case of Cloud Code, they actually are saved to the .cloud-projects directory as a bunch of JSON files. And so you can run this direct command over those JSON files, or you can actually run it within any given session. That's why I set it up. Now, let me talk about Deep Agents. With Deep Agents CLI, you can kick it off with an environment variable indicating the Langsmith project you want to send all the deep agent specific traces to. Now, this is quite nice. Basically, when you're running your deep agent, all of its actions are going to be saved to a particular Langsmith project. So that's kind of acting like those JSON files that you get with Cloud Code, except it's nicely stored and backed up for you all inside Langsmith. So, as an example, I'm using deeper agents in this particular project for a bit. I have been logging my deep agent traces to this project agent traces test. And I can actually look at all the threads. Now, what's the difference between threads and traces? That can be a little bit confusing to people. So basically, traces are just collections of threads. And this is particularly relevant in the case of deep agents, because with deep agent, we often perform human in the loop. So what happens is the deep agent runs for some period of time until it hits a tool call that requires approval. All those messages leading up to that human in the loop breakpoint would be like one trace. Then me as the user approves something. The agent proceeds second trace, and so forth. You roll those all up into a thread. So a thread captures a repeated set of interactions with a deep agent over the course of an individual session. And if you open up any of these threads, you can just see all the different kind of interactions. And in, in particular, if I scroll through this, I can see this was an interaction when I was telling my deep agent some things about how I want to run my debugging workflows. In particular, I was telling it that when I'm running Langgraph or Langtune specific code, I want to then run this utility called Langsmith Fetch to grab the trace and analyze it. So it's basically indicating workflow preferences as I was going through this process with the agent, okay? Now that's the kind of thing that I would consider like an implicit memory or something that I've indicated as a preference to the agent over the course of operation. They maybe haven't explicitly said, hey, save this to memory, but it's something that I've indicated. And upon reflection, may be reasonable and interesting for updating the agent's memory. Now, let me show you an interesting thing that I can do now. I'm going to set my Langsmith project here to agent traces test. So that's going to point to the project that contains all my deep agent traces. And I can just make sure I have this little utility installed. Cool. And you can use the help command to learn about this utility and all the options it has. In a prior video, you can see this in detail. I walk through the debugging workflow using this tool. But the key point is it's a very nice way to very quickly and programmatically access threads or traces from a given project. So I'm going to just call threads. And this should pull the most recent thread from that project. And I'm going to save it to this recent threads directory. Fetching the thread, and it saved it. Great. And we can look at here's that JSON that's saved here, fetch some recent Langsmith traces. We can confirm this is the same thing that we saw over here in Langsmith UI. Fantastic. All right. And in particular, in this, in this sort of we have some preferences about how we want to do workflows in the future. This message from the user saying, when I create a script that uses Langchain or Langgraph and ask to run it, let's just use this Langsmith fetch skill to inspect the trace. So like, run the script to test it, then use this skill to Go ahead and read the most recent trace that was generated. So let's kick off the deep agent CLI again. So I'm just going to instruct the deep agent to read the thread that we pulled down, reflect on the interaction between the user and agent, identify any preferences indicated by the user, and update global memory with these preferences. Capture only preferences that will generalize across interactions and projects. So listen, this is just a very general illustration of this principle. Let's kick this off. Now you can refine this significantly or even add this as a skill. So basically to kick off this workflow where it pulls down 
recent threads, reflects on them, and uses them to update memory. So there's a lot of things you can do with this. This is just very simple to show you the principle. Ah, see, this is cool. Look at this. It figured out from that whole interaction exactly what I wanted it to. It's a good like kind of test case because I kind of knew ahead of time what I wanted it to update. When the user creates or runs scripts that use Langchain or Langgraph and asks the assistant to run them, use Langsmith fetch skill to fetch and inspect the Langsmith trace in person. Sorry. Okay, perfect. This is very cool. So this reflection over historical threads is a very powerful and simple way to distill out implicit preferences that the agent can then add to its global memory. Perfect. Add that. Perfect. And the deep agent indicates what it did. It found a general preference. It updated memory. Let's enter bash mode and look at that agent MD. Boom, look at that. When the user creates or runs scripts with Lang channel line graph and asks the assistant to run them, use Lang switch fetch skill to fetch and inspect the Lang switch traces and present a summary. Perfect. So that's exactly what we wanted. It really works well. This is a simple illustration of what I called that like implicit memory pattern. You can reflect over prior sessions with an agent to learn general things and use that to update agent memory. It's exactly what we did. And this is just showing the principle. There's many ways you can kind of adapt this for your own needs and interests, but it's just highlighting that concept and giving you a taste for how memory updating works with deep agents, both explicit updating, so explicitly telling it to remember a thing, and implicit updating, reflecting over prior interactions or sessions and using that to distill out memory preferences and using that to update memory. Thanks.